Hey, let's look at more Ember add-ons, starting with Liquid Fire. Let's take a look. Hey, so Liquid Fire is an animation library for Ember.js. So I did a video a little bit farther back, I'll put it in the show notes, where I did it on Ember CSS animations, and that's another add-on. So some people requested for me to take a look at it, Liquid Fire, so I'm going to go ahead and, and take a look at it now. I'm just going to go over some a couple basic examples. If you want a more in-depth information about Liquid Fire, just leave a comment below. Maybe I'll do another video and we can go into some more, um, more complicated use cases of it. So I went ahead and created an empty application here using Ember CLI. And to install this plugin, you just need to do Ember. You need to type in Ember, install Liquid Fire. And that will install it into your application. After you create the application, that is, of course. And to create a new application, if you don't remember, it's Ember New. And then you would type in the name of the application. And I won't get into the how I won't get into how you install Ember, but you can always go to ember-cli.com to figure that out. So the idea behind this Liquid Fire animation transition library is that it gives you quite a few things to do to make animations easier and you have something called a transitions file where you can do diff different animations between transitions there's also a liquid if and then a bind so let's just start with something really simple let's take a look at a liquid if and see how that works and we'll look at the built-in transitions so I'm gonna create a few files here so I'm gonna generate an application template and I'm going to create an index and I'm going to create let's create a route called posts and I think that should be let's create a component called example dash comp so now you can see here inside Atom we have all our new routes and everything are in here so let's make sure everything works so in our index our application we have let's make an outlet in here and then in our index let's just call this called index h1 in here and then inside our index we're going to put our example component in it and then in our example component we're going to do another h1 tag called this example component and then we're going to go into our javascript here i'm going to create a toggle I'm going to set it to false and I'm going to create a click action here and you could do this in several different ways I've, in other videos I've created um, an actions and created some action events that I've attached to different buttons and things like this but you can also just add a click action to the whole component itself so we want to do a toggle property on it we're going to toggle the toggle And so that will give us the toggle property. And just to make sure it's working, we're going to go back down to here. And we're going to go if toggle. And we're going to use some Lipsim. I'm a Doctor Who fan, so I'm just going to grab a bunch of Lorem Ipsum from this website. And I'm going to just insert it in here. So here it is, and let's go ahead and start it. Let's see if we can see what it looks like. And we'll look, open up localhost 4200. Give it a second while it's loading. And there it is. And 
it gave us an error. So let me change one thing. I have a little error here. It's this, this, this dot toggle property. And now you can see here. So I click on the example component and I get my text just to make this look a little nicer. Um, let's, let's close the paragraph tags. Let's do three paragraphs. And if we save it, now we have three paragraphs here. You can see just normal. So we click on the component and then that triggers the toggle property which then displays our text. So if we want we can actually make this a liquid property and do some basic animations with it. So instead of having if here we're gonna make it liquid if and we'll still leave the same name there. And one thing we need to do is we can use something called use here. And if you look at liquid fire, there's a number of different built-in transitions, predefined transitions. So there's left, two left, two up, two down, fade, cross fade, explode. And so let's go ahead. And usually you can define these in your transitions file, but if we just want to show a really simple transition, we can do it this way. So let's do cross fade. Doesn't matter. I always like single quotes. All right. So now you can see it here. It's fading in, fades in, fades out, kind of cross fades in, cross fades out. So we can kind of play with these transitions and take a look how they work. Let's do two left. Two left. And now you can see it's coming in from the right hand side moving left and it also moves left outside the text so that's kind of basic there. I can also do two right. So now you can see it's coming in from the left moving out to the right. So you can see basic examples of like that of of that these basic transitions. Um, we can do some try scale if you want. Scale. And you can see it kind of explodes or it kind of shows up here. Nice little animation from the middle. There's actually an anim there actually is something called explode, but we won't get into that. So yeah, those are just a few really simple animations, but what we can do is if we want a little more finer tuned, a lot more finer tuned, we can create a file called transitions.js and we put that in the root folder of the app folder. And I will copy and paste like the quintessential example they have here and what this is saying so you can create a bunch of different transitions uh, you can see from the the documentations it kind of outlines it a little bit um, you can have when you transition from one place to the other you can have specific things happen you can also create your own animations but what this says is when I'm in the index when I move to the posts route it's going to use the two left and then when I go back from the post route to the index, it'll use two right. So it'll kind of move, it'll move one way to the right, and then from the it'll use the left, and then it'll use the right on the way back. So let's see if we can get that working. So I created before. I have this index right here, and I have this post. So we'll let's do this. Let's H1. We'll call it posts route. And in our index, we'll create a link to, and we'll, we'll 
create it to the posts. And then in our post route, we'll just create the opposite back to the index. And we're just going to use an inline instead of a block form link to. Oops. Let's see here. There it is. So we're going to call it index. Index. We're going to save it. Okay, so here's our index. Example component. Still don't care too much about that right now. Here we go. Let's open it again. So if you can see here, when we just move from one to the other, nothing happens. It just works as normal. We're going to the posts route and we're going back in here. But we to get this working, to use our transitions file, we have to actually, for the documentation, we have to actually create an outlet, a liquid outlet. So if we go back to our application, we can, instead of just a normal outlet, we'll make it a liquid outlet. And now we'll try again. I think I found the problem. I actually had a problem with my transitions.js file. I went ahead and deleted it, re-added it in and it works again. So here it is. So I still have my component. It works as it did before. And when I hit posts, now I have it moving from left to right. So now I have these nice transitions between the different routes in here. So that's just a few quick examples on how to use the liquid fire add-on we didn't really do too much other than show some built-in transitions and then use the transition map. It's kind of like your router here. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And definitely, if you think this is interesting, leave a comment and let me know. And so I can do a couple more videos on plugins uh, on this plugin to show more advanced stuff. Thanks. And please click that subscribe button. It really helps me and share with your friends. Thanks.